couple of giveaways over here. Lots of free stuff. If you're not here, you are missing out. is rotten and they have way better lives than we do and they have a plethora of skin products while I grab whatever's on BOGO at Publix as I walk in the door, right? Yeah, I don't care what goes on my skin, but my horse is totally different. So you might have an itchy horse if you come home and you've got broken fence boards. That's often a good sign that you've got a horse going over there and they're itching their butt or they're itching their neck or they're itching something, right? So today, the first thing we're going to do is talk about itchy horses. But in general, we're going to talk about unhappy horse hides and what to do about it. All right. So we're going to start with the itchy horse. And a little bit of what we want to know on the itchy horse when we walk up is how long has this been going on? Was this horse normal yesterday and now it has hives going on? Does it have hives like this, where it's got hives all over? Does it have hives like this, where it's only got hives in a very specific location? That's going to take us in a different direction. The other thing we want to know when you call and say that your horse has hives, we want to know if they're breathing OK. Because hives can be a symptom of a very bad systemic allergic reaction. And if they're not breathing OK, we're going to drive a lot faster to get to you. I mean, we're going to drive pretty fast anyways, but we'll work on land speed records to get to you if you say they're not breathing okay. So we want to know what they looked like yesterday. Or is it a little more subtle? Do you notice that there's some broken hairs going on? You know, when you look at a nice full mane, do you have, like, good mane, bad mane? Do you have itchy top of the tail? Do you just have some flakes of dandruff? There may not be a whole lot of signs going on that that horse is itchy. You may have to do a little detective work to figure out why your fence board is down. I highly recommend security cameras. Although sometimes you don't want to know what your horses are doing when you're not around. Um, or is it incredibly obvious like this horse? This poor horse, you know, the ear on the left is a mess. We've got a super itchy neck. We've got you know, a tail that is just annihilated. And these are the horses that you say every moment I watch them, they're itching something. And I am constantly fixing fence boards. So we just want a little bit of history from you on how long this has been going on and what level we've got going on. So next when we come out, we're going to do a little bit of detective work to figure out what's going on, hopefully. So we're going to break out our go-go gadget magnifying glass, potentially, but probably not. We're at least going to use our eyeballs. Uh -uh. We're going to get our hands on your horse. 
We're going to get a good history from you about what's been going on. We're going to ask you, have there been, have there been, hold on, playing with some sound. Um, we're going to ask, we're going to ask, Let's try that again. We're going to ask. We're going to ask if you've changed hay recently. Have you changed bedding? Have you fertilized? Have you sprayed for weeds in the field? Have you sprayed for pests in the barn? Like, have you changed fly sprays, saddle pads, shampoo that you wash your saddle pads with? Um, and a lot of those questions are much more aimed at the hive horse than the itchy horse. But the sudden onset itchy horse, I'm going to ask a lot of those same questions. Because I want to know if anything has changed in this horse's life to make it suddenly itchy. If it's a hives horse, I want to know, did you... Um, walk into Publix and also buy Tide because it was on sale, but you've always used Purell, and it may be that your horse is allergic to Tide. The next thing I'm going to do is what's called a skin scrape. And this is where I take a, the not sharp side of a scalpel blade, and we go into an itchy spot, and we take a little sample of what's on the skin, and we put it on a microscope slide. Then we stain it. And what we're looking for these chains right here, that's the organism that causes rain rot. And it's called Dermatophilus congolensis because scientists have a sense of humor and they feel like it looks like it's in a conga line. So that is the real reason it is called Dermatophilus congolensis. But also on that skin scrape, we're gonna look to see if we see any mites, which is very, very, very rare in the United States. So if I saw a mite, I might keel over from shock and surprise. Um, I'm going to see, are there lots of bacteria on there? Are there cell types I wouldn't expect to see? Um, those are more unusual. This is the normal guy that we see I'm doing a little conga in there. I might draw some blood, especially on a hive horse. If I'm suspicious that maybe there's a fever going on for some reason that's causing these hives, do we have um, strangles can sometimes cause hives? Other streptococcus bacterial infections can cause hives to happen. Um, they can also sometimes cause horses to just be itchy. So if we're suspicious of something systemic going on, we may draw blood as well. This is our ringworm culture. Um, so this is what it looks like when it's growing ringworm. And this culture is a special one that only grows ringworm. So if we're suspicious of ringworm, then we'll pluck a few hairs and we'll do what's called a dermatophyte culture. Um, so if we're suspicious of that, we may grow it. Now here's ringworm in horses and dogs and cats, but we don't really do that so much. Um, ringworm looks identical to staph infections, which are the run-of-the-mill infection of skin. So you, <laughs> yes, it does, I promise. Um, so you can't just say, oh, that looks like ringworm. It must be ringworm. Ringworm and staph look identical. So without having a positive dermatophyte culture, we don't ever treat horses for ringworm because it's relatively uncommon in horses. Anybody know what that is? If we got an itchy butt, I'm gonna check for pinworms. And that's what pinworms look like. A lot of times you can, it's very easy to find. You can lift up the tail and you'll see sort of a white substance, white chalky looking substance under the tail. Um, if we're not sure, we will do the very scientific scotch tape prep and we take a piece of scotch tape and doop, and they take it surprisingly well. And then we put it on a microscope slide and look at it to see if we have um, pinworm eggs. That's, again, that's a relatively unusual one to stump us, but if we're not sure, we'll go ahead and do a scotch tape test and see what we got. And if I've done all these things and we've done them repeatedly and we've tried a bunch of stuff, my next step may be allergy testing your horse. And just like in humans, what we do is take a bunch of antigens and we inject a small amount of them underneath the skin. I don't know if you guys can all appreciate it, but she has little hives. This is actually mine, worst getting allergy tested. 
notice everything is reactive. Um, so she has little hives to everything that she's going to react to. Yeah, she reacted to everything. Now she lives in Michigan, and she's much happier. Um, so we take that combination of weeds, grasses, haze, and molds that we expose them to in, a, in an area like Florida, and we test them. So if we've gone through a bunch of things and we've tried all the things and we've done all the things and your horse keeps coming back with hives or we just cannot get them good, allergy testing will often be the last diagnostic we do to say, let's figure out what your horse is allergic to and then we'll talk about what we can do about it. So what are we going to do about it? That's why Kinetic is here because we love Kinetic because they're what we do about it. Um, hives, if it has been a sudden onset, we are going to get them bathed in the IR product, which is this guy right here. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's my favorite because it smells like pina coladas. So just putting that out there. It smells delicious. Um, but for hives, this has a combination of anti-itch. So it has Promoxine, which is a product when you put it on your skin, it takes the itch out. You know those sunburn sprays when you spend too much time on the beach and your legs haven't seen the sun ever because you ride horses? Um, so when you put that anti-burn spray on your legs, it has Promoxine in it. It takes that burn out. Promoxine is in here as well. So it takes that kind of sting out. And then it has um, hydrocortisone, which is a steroid, which reduces the inflammation. And it smells amazing. So on acute hives, we're going to do um, an IR product to, to help reduce all of that going on. Um, if they're really bad, we're going to do dexamethasone, which is a, a systemic steroid, to get things under control. And that's usually the worst when you call and say they're not breathing well. They're going to get a dose of dexamethasone when I get there for sure, and then they're probably going to go on a tapering dose of it. If your horse is super itchy, you have called us. We are on our way, but we can't get there. You know, we're tied up with three colics and a laceration because horses all get together and know when to have emergencies and groups. Um, give your horse a bath. And I don't really care what it's in, but give your horse a bath if they've got hives and we'll deal with what we're going to do about it later. But hives are so often a topical reaction that I always tell you, just give them a bath. We'll modify what you're bathing them in later, but first give them a bath while you're waiting for us to get there. Oh, this is why I write little notes to myself. In a pinch, if you have a super itchy hive, especially a big one, you've bathed it, nothing's working, Epsom salt made it into a paste, put it on there, let it sit. It'll help pull the swelling out and the itch. So that's my little down and dirty trick. How many times you between the ant bite and the wasp? Oh, the ant bite hive difference. The good news is it doesn't really matter. We're going to treat them both the same. So <laughs> that's how I tell the difference. The, the biggest way you tell the difference between ant bites and hives is a few days from now, you'll typically find that the ant bites have, you'll at least be able to find a couple that have the little pustules, whereas hives don't tend to go to a pustule phase, they just go straight to a crust. So um, that's the biggest difference, but I tend to treat them the same. The hydrocortisone and the promoxine works really well on um, the itch that the ant bites will give them. If you have one that's super sensitive to, um, like, poison ivy or something, you know, like, especially the white-legged horses will get sensitive to poison ivy sometimes. Um, that works great on that as well. So if we have recurring hives, we've got this horse that no matter what we do, we keep seeing those hives. Those are the horses that we allergy test. That's kind of our first allergy test candidate. Uh, because we need to find out what this horse is allergic to. Unfortunately, the answer is normally grass. That's a great answer, right? Yay, we're allergic to grass and we're a horse. But sometimes it's Timothy, and then we can just put that horse on alfalfa, or we can put them on orchard, and we can get Timothy out of their lives. Um, sometimes we find out they're very allergic to pine, so we're probably going to want to adjust their bedding to something that isn't pine, because if they're in shavings, it's usually pine shavings, so they're going to be constantly exposing themselves and getting hives from that. Um, one of the things, so once we allergy test and we find out what your horse is allergic to, we can make a shot for that. We basically make a vaccine against what they're allergic to. And that's, so when we allergy test, we turn it into an allergy shot. Um, they go on low doses and we gradually pick up the dose of like strength and increase the dose distance. So like we go a stronger dose a week apart. 
a stronger dose 10 days apart. You know, we just keep extending that until we have the immune system tolerized to what we're trying to give them. The other thing we'll use is um, Zyrtec. The good news is Zyrtec is dirt cheap, so we can all afford to give it to horses because they're big and they take lots of stuff. Um, the one problem we have with Zyrtec, it is, it is not legal for pretty much any show. So if you're showing anything that drug tests, you can't use Zyrtec. Um, also, some horses can get a little drowsy from it. So um, the Equishield SA is this product, which I, um, I'm a, I was a huge doubter of this product. And um, I put two mildly um, heavy horses on it, or asthma, which is a whole other talk. But anyway, and they responded. So a lot of our, our high V horses, the ones that seem to just be reactive and they get hives to life itself, we put on this and it definitely seems to reduce their, their hive threshold. So that's where we um, we use the SA product. And it does not test. So on the show horse, that is also what we'll do is make sure they're on that. And the problem with show horses is we, I got to one second. The problem with show horses is we take them into a lot of environments we don't have a lot of control over. And so sometimes we need kind of all the help in the world and that's where SA will also help us on those super sensitive horses. Yes. For Zyrtec, it's um, it's about one pill per 100 pounds, just like a human. Yeah. Um, and Amazon has it really cheap. Um, I'll also look at a lot of environmental changes on those horses. Again, we'll look at what soap you're using. We'll look at your bedding. We'll look at where you turn out. We'll look at your hay. You know, we'll kind of look at all of those things and see if there's something environmental we can we can impact. Um, one of the things that we use here to help reduce our dust is we've added cardboard bedding to our, um, our pine bedding, and it about halves our dust. Um, and so sometimes we'll look at that on those guys to really reduce it. At my house, we use all cardboard. There's some reasons we don't use it here, but um, we use all cardboard at my house, and I have no dust. So that has been fantastic for uh, my slightly heavy horses at my house. So. Um, so if we've got a uh, ringworm, we're going to put them on an oral ringworm drug as well as the CK shampoo, which we're going to pretend this says CK shampoo, but CK shampoo is currently on back order. So this says CK, not CKHC. So we're going to put them on CK shampoo because it has ketoconazole, which is an antifungal. And then in order to get rid of um, ringworm, we do need to put them on a systemic antifungal because ringworm spores are like everywhere once you have it. So you got to kind of kick it in the pants to get rid of it. Um, and if they've got pinworms, we're going to give them a dose of pyrantel. Now, if you've watched our deworming seminar, this is the only time we're going to give pyrantel and we're not going to consider it a normal deworming for your horse. And if you want more information than that, then you need to go on YouTube and watch our deworming seminar. Shameless plug. So, now, what if they're allergic to these guys? This is an actual magnified picture of a gnat, I'm pretty sure. Um, they are Satan's creatures, and there are about 51 different species of them. So, saying that they only come out at dawn and dusk, as you all know, that is not true. Yes, there are lots of different species that come out at only dawn and dusk, but there's lots of them that come out at all different times. So, managing the gnat allergy is good times. So, we work to, again, reduce the itch with IR, or they have a product called IBH, which stands for Insect Bite Hypersensitivity. It's made by Kinetic specifically for the insect allergy horse. And it has citronella in it as well because the gnats don't like it. So they make it in this amazing ointment that you can put in the nasty ears. It might work great on human ears as well, just saying. Um, and it's got all the same kind of anti-inch things as the IR plus the citronella. This is the salve right here. And we're going to demo all this. You guys can come up and get your fingers in it and all kinds of stuff. Um, so we're going to try to reduce the itch. We're going to try to avoid the gnats. That's... That's a tough one. Um, we're going to try to avoid the gnats by putting them in fly sheets from head to toe. We're going to try to have them in during the worst of the time, but like I just said, they're out kind of all the time, so it's hard to say. Just live in a stall under a fan to most of our horses. But I will tell you that there are some very great fly sheet options out there that don't make them very hot. Um, Schneider's in particular, which is sstack.com, 
I also have them on speed dial. They're like number seven in my phone. Um, they make a great fly sheet called their Mosquito Mesh Fly Sheet that is um, a bit like a screen porch for a horse. So the, the air can still flow through, but the gnats can't get there. Um, so we're going to... And we're going to try to reduce any other sources of itch for this horse. Um, and again, that's where we're going to talk about environmental management. We're going to talk about what hay you're on. We're going to do all of these sorts of things to try to manage the itch on those horse, horses. Now, some of these we also um, will use Zyrtec on to help us reduce that itch again. And again, we'll use the SA on the ones that are the show horses that we can't have on Zyrtec um, because we're just backing them away from that itch a little bit. But I'll be honest with you, gnat horses, gnat allergic horses are, you know, they don't get better. So they are a full-time occupation to really make sure that you're avoiding gnats to the best of your ability. I will say that we have, um, we do have some good options for fly sprays. Um, I don't know if anybody knew Dr. Mattinger when she was here doing her PhD, but um, Erica Mattinger has just completed phase one of a trial and I'm going to give you all a little secret go buy EcoVet it was by far and away the best fly spray in the um, in the trials and it's E-C-O-V-E-T it smells like bad old man aftershave but there you go it's worth it um, it's a smell let me tell you it's a smell um, we have a less stinky one called ectomethrin that um, binds to the hair shaft and also works pretty darn well um, and then Ultra Boss is a pour on option. Uh, we really like that for the uh, less tame options in the practice. Um, although my donkeys, I guess you could call them tame. But, um, you, you know, like the ones that you're not doing as much with, you're not riding, they're probably hanging out in a pasture. You can use Ultra Boss as a pour in that you pour on once a day, or once a week rather. Um, and it'll last for you for about a week. Unless we have an inch and a half of rain like we had yesterday, in which case it'll last three to four days. So, but it still does pretty well. It doesn't do well on the horse you're riding every day because the, the bathing and the rinsing and the sweating doesn't do as well on that. But the horse or the donkey that isn't getting as much done with them, Ultra Boss ends up being a great option for those guys. I think, yep, now we're going to talk about the funky horse. So hold on. Um, 
kind of looks like this. That's what happens before it all peels off and starts looking like bare skin. So it um, doesn't always look classic like that, but that's still what it is. Um, one way you can tell if it's rain rot, they have what are called paintbrush lesions. It's because if you peel off these scabs, these crusts, um, the scabs you peel off look kind of like a paintbrush tint. So if you have, if you peel those raised hairs off and it comes off like that and then you're left with a bare patch, you've got rain rot. Now the skin funk can happen other places too. I'm sure anybody that has horses in Florida has seen scratches or a dew poisoning before. Um, the technical term is pastern dermatitis. Um, comes in many varieties, mild, moderate, and severe. But even the mild variety, I've seen a lot of horses um, develop severe cellulitis, which is bacteria um, under the skin that goes up their whole leg, um, causes major swelling and discomfort. I have seen that from the most mild cases of scratches. All it takes is a little break in the skin for that bacteria to get in, and it will blow up the whole leg. So. Even though it doesn't seem like a big problem, this is definitely something you want to manage as soon as you identify it. And then um, they love to get skin funk on the front of their hind cannon bones as well. Um, you might have heard it called cannon crud. The technical name is cannon keratosis. Um, this is a little bit different than the other two um, in that it's not generally caused um, by an infection, but it's just your horse's skin gets too oily and it overproduces skin cells in this area and it kind of looks gross. So a lot of owners don't like it. Um, you don't want to pick it off too aggressively because then they bleed and um, again you can end up with a cellulitis, a, a leg infection. Yes, to get a question. Why do they get it on the back legs? We aren't really sure. Um, one theory is that since it's more common in geldings, it could be from urine splashing up onto the hind legs. But um, I, I, yeah, it, bears get it too, so that doesn't really explain that case. So, um, yeah, we don't really know why it only develops on the hind legs, but and it can develop on the front legs too. It's just more commonly seen on the hinds. All right. So, in attempting to treat all of these conditions, everybody goes to the tack shop or the feed store and buys all the products. Um, off the shelves, like your antifungal shampoos, your antifungal sprays and creams and ointments. Um, but as a matter of fact, all of those conditions that we just talked about, they're not actually caused by fungus. They're caused by bacteria. Um, now, Dr. Lasher showed a picture of this earlier, but this is the same bacteria that causes rain rot, uh, causes pastern dermatitis causes a lot of your skin problems that dermatophilus condolensis. Dermatophilus actually means likes skin, so this bacterium likes the skin. Um, it has this typical, they call it a railroad track appearance, they kind of look like railroad tracks going around. So this is usually the culprit for all of those nasty bacterial skin conditions. And this is also why you're probably getting so frustrated with your antifungal shampoos, your antifungal creams, and they're just not working. Well, it's not a fungus. I mean, I have seen ringworm once in my career. I see Dermatophilus condolensis several times a week. So, just got to know what you're treating. All right, so how do I get rid of it? Um, funny story. I remember when I was little, my mom had a horse with really bad scratches. Um, and she would go out to the barn every day and she would scrub his legs really well with betadine and she would pick off all those scabs till it was bleeding and she would then she knew that it was bad for the legs to be wet and she had just given him a bath so she would bring a roll of paper towels out to the barn she would towel dry his pasterns and then she would plug in a hair dryer at the barn she would hair dry blow dry his pasterns um, and then she would take her antifungal cream that she bought in the drugstore, and it's really embarrassing because you have to buy this like yeast ointment cream at, at the drugstore, and they're like, "Wow, you must have a terrible infection. That's disgusting." And then um, she would, you know, rub this cream all over the pasture, which I was like, "Why did you bother getting it dry? Now it's all moist again, but whatever." So it never worked. The horse always had severe scratches. She did this religiously every day, 
it never helped. I just wish that she had a different way to treat it. Luckily, we have um, things like socks and these CK products that make our lives so much easier. So um, my favorite product, we don't get to pick our favorites, um, is the CK shampoo. Again, this is the CK with the hydrocortisone, which is great too, but CK shampoo is my favorite of the Kinetic products. Um, I like to think I'm a good horse vet, but I'm not a good horse owner. Um, my horse gets a bath maybe once a week, if I think of it, and he gets really bad scratches. If I give him a bath with the CK shampoo when he has the scratches, if I can get it done twice in one week, they're gone, they are cleared up. So it is really good for you slacker horse owners that don't give your horse a bath every day and just want an easy fix, okay? So CK shampoo is my favorite for scratches and brain rot. And really, um, I bathe my horse in it most of the time because I'm like, chances are you're not getting a bath till next week, so we're gonna get all this good stuff up in there. Um, but brain rot uh, and scratches, the CK shampoo is my favorite product. You do want to scrub pretty well. Um, don't be too aggressive. Don't pick it off till it bleeds. That's just going to aggravate the skin and give a chance for that bacteria to get under the skin and cause cellulitis. Um, but you do want to scrub it so it gets under the hair. And then you want to let it sit for about five to ten minutes. Usually by the time you scrub all the legs, get your shampoo everywhere you want to, you know, wash their tail or whatever you're going to do, and then come back to rinse it, it's been five to ten minutes. So, you know, let it sit for a minute, rinse it off. Like I said, if you do that twice in one week, the problem will be gone. Um, and then, for your Canon crud, um, our favorite is the CK Sal. So, this is another really nice set it and forget it type of treatment. Um, and Kayla is going to demonstrate um, how it works on a horse that we put it on, um, I think, two days ago. But essentially, you take a thin layer of the Sal, scrape it on the front of the Canon bones where they have that nasty, oily stuff. Leave your, turn your horse back out in the field. Two days later, come and wipe it off, and all that crud just wipes right off of it. Um, so it's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, it, they do have a spray as well. They used to have wipes. We really hope they come back out with the wipes um, if kinetic people are listening. But um, if not, the wipes are so awesome. Yeah, you just wet them a little bit, especially for faces. My horse hates having his face washed. I don't know about yours. But if you just get the wipes wet and then scrub it on their face, it's a great option there. Or if you don't feel like giving them a whole bath and you just want to spot treat, the wipes are awesome for that. But the spray works as well. Just a quick uh, mention about the socks for horses. Uh, these are called Silver Winnies. The company is Socks for Horses. And that is another great treatment option um, for scratches. Your pastern dermatitis um, works really well. The socks are silver impregnated and that's antibacterial. So again, takes care of that um, bacteria that's sitting on the skin causing the problem. Um, also helps to prevent cellulitis because it offers some compression. So um, we love the socks. If you have more questions about that, I can answer them afterwards. All right, and then, um, so that's pretty much all of the funk that we deal with and how to fix it. Um, I just wanted to mention another um, kinetic product real quick that we didn't touch on, and that's SB. So um, SB sunblock. This is sunblock for horses, though. This is good stuff. Um, it goes on thick enough that you only have to do it like every other day. Um, if you try to use human sun tan lotions, they just kind of fall right off a horse um, with the way they sweat and get dirty and roll around in the pasture. This stuff will actually stick. Um, and my favorite thing about it is it has citronella in it, too. You can smell the citronella. Um, so it's a bug repellent as well. Um, Dr. Lasher and myself will, will put it on like war paint on really buggy days just to keep the bugs out of our ears and away from our faces. Um, and we use it for sunblock for ourselves, too, because it works so great. Um, Right. And um, these were some horses with some really nasty skin funk. This was in the Virgin Islands where Kayla went on a service trip um, to go help uh, the horses affected by Hurricane Harvey. So, I'm sorry, not Hurricane Harvey. Irma. Irma. Yeah. Um, so anyway, 
these horses had all sorts of rain rot. Um, they had all been standing like knee deep in water for extended periods of time, so they had um, scratches and cannon crud. You could see the mud on their legs, but um, luckily, uh, Kayla was able to take a lot of the kinetic products down and leave them there so um, these horses could get treated. Um, and that's what that sunburn picture was from as well. There's a horse down there. They were just exposed to the elements. So um, again, really grateful to Kinetic for those donations and for um, these donations for you guys tonight. So I think we're gonna do a drawing now and um, everybody get out your raffle tickets. And we have 25 prizes here. So what we'd like you to do, um, we wanna make sure you get a product that's appropriate to the issue that your horse is having or that your horses tend to have. So um, we're gonna record your numbers um, and then come talk to us. If you were a winner, come talk to us afterwards. Talk to myself or Dr. Latcher or one of our technicians in the back. So Kayla, who's gonna be doing the horse demo or Nancy, who's in the green shirt. Um, Nancy, can you wave? Okay. So talk to Kayla, Nancy, or one of us, and we will select the product that is best for you, um, for your for our winners. Oh, yeah, put hers in the cup. All right. All right. So our first winning number is one six four six two eight. Yay! Okay. We're going to put them over here. Come talk to us after. We'll pick a product for you. I guess everyone has 164, huh? 164, 600. 600. No? All right. We'll pick another one. 633. 
six four six one six. Okay. Just ask Amy, she'll tell you what she wants. <laughs> one six four six one one. Good job. <laughs> All right, one, six, four, six, two, five. All right, Andrea. One, six, four, six, three, one. All right, good job, Cindy. Oh, I see what I did. What did you do? So they, I pulled 600 points. Let's go over there. I gave you the 601. All right. Okay, so you guys won. Yeah, sorry. That was me. Is there more? Oh, okay. Well, that's the same one. Okay, because they got the same. And I pulled it one. Got it? Yeah. Okay, so we get two more. Alright. Two more. Two more chances to win. One, six, four. Six, one, five. Oh, perfect. Under the wire. All right. And our last winning number is one, six, four, six, zero, seven. Woo! Here's the prize. All right. Assuming I counted right, I think that's all the prizes we have here tonight. But if you have any questions, please feel free to come up and talk to us afterwards anyway. All right, thank you guys for coming. Thank you to Kinetic. Oh, all right, our demo. So here's the horse that got the CK cell two days ago. Yep. And here's Kate. All right, my name is Kayla. Um, this is Bolt. He was previously a police horse, so he should be pretty good for us. So two days ago, we applied the CK salve, which is this one right here. We used a very thin layer. Um, you don't you don't need a lot. Little goes a long way. So this little tiny thing should last you. It lasted me a year, so it should last you as, as well. Um, so this is the cannon bone funk that we all know and love. And as you can see, his nice white legs, there's black on them. And what this does, it raises the, um, all the nasty crud that's on the cannon bone. So now I'm just going to go over it and wipe it off. And I'll show you guys. You could have used the CK wipes, however, those are no, no longer in stock. But a rag is just just fine, and I get it wet a little bit just to make it less abrasive. And it's a miracle, it's all off. <laughs> no scrubbing, your horses will absolutely love this stuff. So we did it on the cannon bone, and then we also did it up here above the hawks. That's another place they like to get that nasty funk. And now it's all gone as well. So this stuff they also get on their face. My horse loves to get it on their face. I apply a thin layer 48 hours later, and I, I just go and wipe it off. And the hair, of course, it's going to take the hair off. However, the hair tends to grow back in a couple of days. All the, um, the antifungal and antibacterial allows the hair to grow back really quickly. Yes? It takes it off, and um, like now it's because of the antifungal and antibacterial that um, until it rains again and the skin becomes oily or muddy, um, it's going to stay away. It stays away for longer. Yeah, a longer amount of time than scrubbing it off because no, no. However, mine does it once or twice in a year during the rainy the rainy season, and I've only had to do it a couple of times. Yep. Um, what else are we going to do? 
horses are always taking a step towards a cliff that they're going to fall off. And what the allergy shots do is they allow us to reduce all the rest of the itch so that his exposure to the gnats, you know, his itch threshold is here. The gnats are probably a, a big component, but so are a lot of other things. And so if we can reduce down here, then we can have the gnats, but it won't make us hit that spot. So that's how that works. And like I said, we are all here to answer questions. So, and Bolt loves it if people come touch him and fawn over him, and somebody else can take the uh, take the can of funk off the right hind. It's very rewarding. So there you go. Here, Dr. Uh, two, two I don't know. It's it's still going, but I'll cut this part off. But yeah, microphones, camera. So. And that's why I said it right from the screen. Uh, it's a great thing. Oh, no, I meant like 